I design strategies to address public problems. Um, and what I found out after many years working at addressing this is that people are very good at identifying unwanted or unwarranted situations, yet they are terrible at, at framing them for a strategy resolution. And the consequence of not, playing, of not paying close attention uh, to what we're doing is that we sometimes lead to an unconscious acceptance of reality and sometimes we normalize violence or normalize other problems. Um, and we jump recklessly into action. Sometimes I think of uh, Dr. Ian Malcolm's example of Jurassic Park when he's addressing John Hammond, and he says, you know, your scientists were too worried about if they could, that they never stopped to worry uh, if they should. And this is very commonplace in policy making. Um, maybe from this talk, I'd like you to take three things. One is that problem, public problems exist only in as much as there's a group of concerned citizens. Two, that they require careful framing, and framing is costly. And three, that you can make a difference by building bridges uh, so that people can fight for, their, for themselves, for their own rights. So I'll start by the first point, which is uh, concerned citizens. Margaret Mead's quote, uh, never doubt that a group of thoughtful, committed individuals can change this world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has, is um, very true to this day. However, it's not enough. So I'd like to take you to a small story in 2004 um, that really changed my own perspective on this approach. Uh, in Minunima, in the state of Guerrero, um, the municipality of Metlaltonoc, there was a small village where they had a few incidents of death. Uh, people died because of easily preventable diseases and were unable to reach a doctor. Now, Metlaltonoc in Mexico is one of the poorest municipalities and in 2005, it was ranked as one of the poorest by the Human Development Report. 98% um, of the population is indigenous from Tlapanec or um, Mistec origin. And um, they have no running water or electricity, at least not then, probably not now. And um, because they did, because they um, went through uh, these deaths, most of them stomach infections, they were really angry, disgruntled. They did what most people do, which is they started demonstrations and they went to um, Metlatonoc and then Chilpancingo. And eventually, um, they went to the governor. And the governor and everybody else, they came out and tried to appease them. They sent them doctors. Um, but they never really solved it and they never really built them the clinic that they were asking for. The reason was because they didn't have any water, they couldn't comply with the regulations. Um, and because if they did, every little village would start asking for one and they couldn't afford it. That was until um, a small little not-for-profit called Centro de los Derechos Humanos de la Montaña de Tlachino Yan decided to take on this battle. And uh, they identified this and framed it as a constitutional infringement of their rights, their right to health, Artículo Cuarto Constitucional. And uh, they sued the government and the 7th District Court of the State of Guerrero, the year late in 2008, um, concluded that indeed their rights had been violated. Now, this is a very interesting example because it means that the people were very aware of the problem they were in, but they didn't have the technical tools or expertise to frame it as a human rights issue. So the strategy of confronting this as a legal strategy um, was never on the board until someone came. Now, framing the problems requires for it to be science-based. Um, and this is costly. No matter where we look, um, we're always looking for new ways to address problems. And the thing with framing is that if you don't have anyone to hear them, then there is no such problem. We could call it, in a way, Schrodinger's policy. If there's no one there to hear it, then did the tree really fall in the woods? Very close to here in Playa del Carmen, most people are not aware that the most prevalent cause of death after diabetes and um, hypertension are actually related to skull fractures. Now, this won't really be an issue until a politician decides to address this, either because they want to undermine whoever's in government or because they have a legitimate concern. Now, this takes me to the next step. If we're addressing and framing, we've got to be very careful. We've got to identify who is being affected. 
we've got to identify where we are, you know, what is our baseline, then we want to know where we want to get. And in order to do this, we need to understand why our actions will help. And this means explaining through science-based policy what we want to do. In literature, authors dramatize conflict. Seinfeld, the director, showed us that actions that lead to nothing lead to comedy goal. In policy, actions that lead to nothing can sometimes lead to tragedy. Here in Mexico, the institution that's responsible for evaluating the impact of policies is called the Coneval. And their slogan is, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. However, in Mexico, and this is something I know from her first-hand experience, most programs jump into action, and only later do diagnostics come into appearance, making them redundant in many ways. And this is very important because um, political scientists joke around, you know, either you do politics or politics do you. And this has a lot to do with framing, because Framing defines the priorities of the time, and if we are still stuck in three-year programs for municipalities in Mexico, for six-year programs for the states and for the federal government, then these timings are subject to electoral cycles, which means there's only a conflict of interest if it's only politicians that are writing and designing and implementing these policies. This means we need to come together and invite different actors of civil society and businesses to start designing in long-term plans that actually provide solutions that go beyond the electoral cycles. In Mexico, without uh, civil servantry that is professionalized, it means that three years and six years are not enough, especially because everyone has to be replaced. And then again, policies are not science-driven. Um, here in the Riviera Maya, where we're exposed to climate change, we have many problems. And in framing them, we acknowledge that most, at least, the ones that are regarding environmental impacts and the climate emergency, like sargasso, like the plastic that arrives from our beaches, these are problems that have the causes way beyond our jurisdiction as grassroots organizations. However, this does not mean that we have to address um, well, we have to do nothing. Of course, we've got to clean up our beaches, address the plastic, we've got to deal with the sargasso. But we also have to think beyond our borders. However, there are many problems that do fall in between our jurisdictions. Think about the multiculturality, the impact foreigners are having in this place, one of the vastest growing development in the world. How are we affecting the local culture, our metropolitan culture? How are we appropriating or acculturating new things? These are all very delicate issues. And if you have any of these concerns, then deep down, there is a problem that has to be framed so we can address it. And this is my call to action to you. Come together with a group of concerned citizens, because indeed it's the only thing that ever works. But be careful of framing these actions so that we can actually address the root of the problems, of their causes, and not later, when it's too late, and when we're just recklessly jumping into action. I think right now it's time to invest a little more on framing our problems well so that we can have a better future, all of us, in this paradise. <laughs>